Hi there and welcome to another video from Hegarty Maths, another GCSE video and it's the second one on solving linear equations. This time we will have fractional terms involved when we're doing this. As always, if you need more help with your GCSE or A-level maths, do check out check out the Hegarty Maths um, chat YouTube channel or Hegarty Maths on Twitter. Now just before we launch into uh, the examples, there's one very important thing to note that I think students a lot of the time get confused with. And if you could get this idea in your head, it's half the battle really. If I was to write a half x, a half multiplied by x, okay, that is the same thing or that is uh, equivalent to x over 2. Okay? Both these things mean the same. Now, how can that be the case? Well, let's just take a half x. That's a half multiplied by x, it means. So, half multiplied by x. Now, x as a fraction is x over 1. Okay? And when you're multiplying fractions, you multiply top by top. 1 times x is x. Over bottom times bottom, 2 times 1 is 2. Hence, half x is the same as x over 2. So it's a very important concept this to be able to switch between these ideas. So multiplying in this case by a half, if you multiply x by half, that's the same as taking x and dividing it by 2. They're the same ideas. Let's just extend this further. So therefore if I had something like a third uh, y plus 3, okay, that's the same thing as y plus 3 over 3. Okay? And usually when solving equations it's this notation which is more helpful to us to solving equations using the balance method as we could do a multiplication of both sides of an equation to eliminate the denominator. So there's the big idea that can come up in these type of questions. If you can get that in your head we're half there. Okay, let's, so let's do some examples. Here's example one. Solve for x. One third x is equal to nine. Now, given what I've just talking about, a third times x, well, that's the same thing. That's equivalent to x divided by three. So I've just converted this into a division as I think it's more helpful to solve. So x over three or x divided by three is equal to nine. Then we can multiply both sides by three. Uh, to remove the denominator here. So of course three lots of this would just be x. So x must be 9 times 3 which is 27. And underline your answer. And of course as we always do we're going to check if this is indeed right. Um, a third multiplied by 27 well a third of 27 is indeed 9. Okay so it's definitely right. Example 2 a fifth of the brackets, a fifth of the entire of x minus 2 is equal to 3. Let's convert this into a fraction. x subtract 2 divided by 5 is equal to 3. Okay, it's simpler to deal with in this case. So let's eliminate the denominator of 5 by multiplying both sides of the equation by 5. So we would get x subtract 2 is equal to 15. Lastly, let's add 2 to both sides, and we would get that x is equal to 17. And let's underline our work as follows, and let's check it's indeed right. 17 take away 2 would be 15. A fifth of 15 is indeed 3. I know I've done that right. Next, example 3. A quarter of x plus 6 is equal to negative 1. Just quickly flicking back to example two, what's the difference, other than the, the obvious numbers, what am I trying to point out the difference in these two examples are? Well, there's no brackets here, right? It's not a quarter of x plus six, it's just a quarter of x, okay? Otherwise, a bracket would need to be there. So, this six is independent, it's got nothing to do with the quarter. To solve this, let's subtract 6 off both sides. A quarter x would be equal to negative 7. 
negative 1, subtract another 6. Now this, a quarter x, we said this is x over 4, and that's equal to negative 7. So if we multiply both sides by 4, x must be negative 7 multiplied by 4, which is negative 28. And we'll underline our work. And we're going to check if this is indeed right. A quarter of negative 28, well, that's negative 7. And negative 7 plus 6 is indeed negative 1. I know I've got it right. So be careful here, there was no brackets. If there were brackets, it would be x plus 6 over 4. Because there's no brackets, it's just a quarter of x, which is x over 4, and the 6 is separate. Example 4. 4 divided by x is equal to 8. There's an x on the denominator here. We need the x not on the denominator. Let's multiply both sides by x. 4 over x multiplied by x is just 4, and 8 multiplied by x is 8x. And then we have 8x is equal to 4, so let's divide both sides by 8. x must be equal to 4 over 8, and 4 over 8 is a half, but we usually write it with the x first, so x is therefore equal to a half. Now, is this right? x is equal to a half? Well, 4 divided by a half is 8, because how many halves in 4? There are 8 of them, so we know that's right. Or the alternative way we could double check this, 4 divided by a half, we could write it as 4 divided by a half, and 4 we can write as 4 over 1, and we could change that to multiply by 2 over 1, which turns out to be 8, if we're checking uh, using algorithms we've learned when we were younger. But obviously 4, how many halves go into 4? Well, 8. And there we go, that's correct. Example 5, 3 divided by x is equal to negative 2. Let's multiply both sides by x. So 3 would be equal to negative 2 times x, which is negative 2x. Let's divide both sides by the negative 2. Don't forget the negative. So 3 divided by negative 2 is equal to x. And 3 divided by negative 2, that's the same as negative 3 over 2. OK, which is negative 1.5. And 3 divided by negative 1.5 is indeed negative 2. Checking that on your calculator so you know you've done this correct. Example 6. 3 bracket x plus 5 over 2 is equal to 6. OK, let's... Uh, remove the 2 off the denominator by multiplying both sides by 2. So we would have that 3x plus 5 is equal to 2 times 6, which is 12. Let's then expand the bracket. So we would get that 3x plus 15 is equal to 12. Let's then subtract 15 off both sides. So 3x is equal to 12, subtract 15, which is negative 3. Let's divide both sides by 3. x is negative 3 over 3, which is negative 1. Let's underline our answer, and let's check that's right. Negative 1 plus 5 is 4. 3 times 4 is 12. 12 divided by 2 is 6. I've got this right. Next question. Uh, 16 subtract x over 4 is equal to 1 uh, minus x. Now what I tend to do here is I tend to, because all of this is being divided by 4, I find it helpful just to have a bracket uh, on that side. So the first thing we're going to do, and let's have a bracket here as well. The first thing we're going to do is uh, remove the 4 of the denominator by multiplying both sides by 4. So we get 16 subtract x would be 4 multiplied by 1 minus x. And then let's expand that bracket. So we would get 16 subtract x is equal to 4, subtract 4x, expanding the bracket using the distributive law. And then we would, um, let's say, uh, collect all the x's together. Let's add 4x to both sides. So we would get 16, uh, negative x plus 4x is positive 3x is equal to 4. Let's subtract 16 off both sides to get all the numbers on the right-hand side. So 3x would be equal to 4 subtract 16, which would be negative 12. And dividing both sides by 3, 
x would be negative 12 divided by 3, x would therefore be negative 4. And we'd underline our work and we check we've done it right. 16 subtract negative 4 is like 16 plus 4, which is 20. 20 divided by 4 is 5. And on this side, 1 subtract negative 4 would be 1 plus 4, which again is 5. So I know I've done that by it. Okay, the last one, probably the most complicated example, we have to solve for x in this case. Now, when I see something like this, the first thing I do to make my life easier, because the 2x subtract 1 is all being divided by 2, put a bracket around it. It's good practice. It's going to help in a second. Okay? And similarly, because the x subtract 5 is being divided by 3, let's put a nice bracket around that just to say that everything on the top is being divided by 3. Now, you should know from previous knowledge, in order to add and subtract fractions, the denominators need to be the same. So what's the lowest common multiple of 2 and 3? What's the smallest number that 2 and 3 divide into? Well, it's 6. So let's have a 6 on the bottom. OK? And don't forget our subtract. What do I need to do to this 2 to get 6? Multiply by 3. So let's multiply the top by 3 as well. Okay, what do I need to do to this 3 to get this to be 6? I multiply by 2. So let's multiply the top by 2 as well. And we've done nothing to the uh, right hand side. Now let's expand these. So this on this side here would be 6x subtract 3. Keep a bracket around that. Take away. All of this is going to be take away. If I expand this out, it would be 2x subtract 10. All of that divided by 6 is equal to 5 over 4. Right. Now, at this point, let's, uh, let's just um, combine the tops. This is saying 6x subtract 2x, which is equal to 4x. And this here is saying negative 3 subtract negative 10, which is negative 3 plus 10, which is uh, actually 7. So this would be plus 7 over 6 is equal to 5 over 4. Now, at this point here, why don't we multiply? We want to solve for x. Let's multiply both sides by 6, OK? Uh, so we can remove the 6 here. So we would get that 4x plus 7 is 5 over 4 multiplied by 6. Well, 5 over 4 multiplied by 6, doing that on your calculator, is actually 7.5. 7, uh, 7 and a half, 7.5. Now we can subtract 7 off both sides. 4x would therefore be 7.5, to uh, take away 7, which is a half. And then dividing both sides by uh, 4, a half divided by 4, is an eighth. So x is equal to an eighth. And that's our answer. And then what we do is we go back up to this and with our calculator, two times an eighth is a quarter. A quarter take away one is negative three quarters. And we have a divided by two. And this here is a subtract. Uh, an eighth take away uh, five. Work that out divided by three. Do this all in your calculator and you should get um, 5 over 4. And that's it for this particular video and we're done here. Now, um, just to say, um, just we're done here for these particular videos. Tune in for the third video in this series and this is probably the most important for the GCSE. It's showing you how uh, these, these sort of linear equations come up in the exam. You usually have to set them up from geometry exam style questions. So I'll be going through that in the next video. As always, check out Hegarty Maths on YouTube or Twitter for more help with your studies. Check it out for now and see you again sometime.